Good morning and welcome to Wellbeing Wednesday. Um, special episode this week, we're going to do it over two weeks um, because I'm talking to the wonderful Ian Stevenson um, from Tethered Tripod Photography based in the royal town of Witten Bassett. Um, but we're not going to be talking about photography because in May last year, um, Ian attempted to take his own life and has very kindly agreed to talk to us about that period of his life, what he went through and, and how he's got to be where he is now. Um, so thank you so much, Ian, and welcome. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, thanks for having me on board. Um, this is tough to do mm -hmm. this, I'll be honest. Um, I'm laying myself bare and it's going to go out onto the internet and it never leaves the internet, does it? So um, I think you're extremely brave this. and I think that a lot of people are going to get a lot from your experience. Um, um, if I can help just one person um, avoid going through or what I went through or change their course of um, destiny, whatever it, whatever you want to call it, then, then it's been worthwhile. So I think my aim is to help other people, obviously. So take us back to April, May time last year. Well, I've been having a, a really rather difficult time, um, personal life, um, business life, um all sorts of things have been challenging really challenging um i think if i'm being brutally honest i've struggled with mental health certain depression for a great many years i was diagnosed first in 2010 having depression um but i suspect it, it was deeper than that mm. um, i experienced a fair number of traumatic events in my life through um my employment and um everything kind of came to a head. It was almost like the perfect storm um, was arising. And in the months leading up to May last year, I probably made a couple of half-hearted attempts at doing something to see, almost testing the waters in some respect mm. as to what might work or how I might feel about it. But then came May, um, and I remember on a Thursday evening, I made a, another half-hearted attempt and then something else happened on the Sunday, which forced me, say forced me, I guess it tipped my mind a little bit over the edge from where I, I had been. Um, and I then actually went out and made a, what I consider to be a very serious attempt to take my life. Uh, so you, you left the house, you took a rope, Yes. found a tree. I did. And you and actually, go on. I, I made sure that the rope was perfectly secure around the tree, that the tree branch would support my weight. Um, and um, I proceeded to attempt to kill myself. And, I'm not, you know. and had it not been for the intervention of, of others, um, um, a little bit of luck, then I think perhaps I wouldn't be here now to to share my story with anybody so um, are you able to explain what was going through your head at the time because a lot of people think that suicide is a very selfish act um i don't believe that i think it's an act of pure desperation um and i think you have to be incredibly brave um to attempt to take your own life uh, are you able to sort of explain your thought process at that time? Yeah, I, I think what happens is um, things start to happen and it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's not as a result. You don't start feeling like that as a result of one thing going wrong. Um, it, it invariably, it's almost like a drip feed and it can take, it might take weeks or it might take months or it might take years for the, Imagine your body, your brain to be a bottle and it's this constant drip of things that don't sit comfortably with you or don't go quite right. And you can't find a mechanism to, to deal with those things. They build up over time. Mm. And I think where, where I had been in the months leading up to, to that, I, I'd been in a situation where uh, maybe it was a cry for help. Maybe it was... I want to do this and I've got young children um, 
I've got uh, my son at the time was was seven. He's eight now. Um, my daughter is four now. She was she was just coming up to her third birthday actually at the time. And um, um, you, you I've been made aware of the impact me disappearing would have on the family and on those around me and friends of mine as well um some of whom have been incredibly supportive and helpful to me and the you reach a point when you feel that it's time that you have measured all of that and you've measured the pain that your passing will cause mm. and you and I understand why people think selfishly disregard that because the pain that you yourself are feeling far far exceeds mm. the pain that will be left behind and it must be um, it, it strikes me as a feeling of no way out as well it, it's a really desperate situation to be in, if I'm being brutally honest. It, it it reaches the point where it doesn't seem to matter what course of action you take, what plans you put in place, what mechanisms you put in place. Nothing helps to alleviate the pain and the suffering that you are experiencing yourself. Um, and um, for the most part, you try your best to soldier on and you try to maintain an even keel and openly and outwardly you're, you're fine, but inwardly you are absolutely, completely broken. Mm. And, you know, cognitive thought processes become disjointed um, mm. and you don't see or you or you feel is pain, it's, it's I think, horrendous. I think it's incredible that, that you can talk about this and I honestly believe it's gonna help so many people. Um, but I think it's important to leave this week's episode um, with the reassurance that there is a way back from how you were feeling. Well, we're now um, nearly 18 months down the line from, from there um it's taken it's been a long journey it's been a difficult journey um but there is a way back and there's always a way back and sometimes a lot of what you perceive to be insurmountable actually isn't insurmountable what you need is the right tools the right help the right support and the right guidance to not fix you because you don't need fixing but what you do need is you need help to sort out the mess that your brain has become because mm. it's a mess it's a mush it's like a soup mm. of all these thoughts and nothing everything is screaming to be at the front and actually most of it's in, inconsequential a hell of a lot of it's inconsequential mm. in the grand scheme of things but to you at that time it's massive and insurmountable mm. so mm. yes there is definitely a way back and the fact that I'm here having this conversation is absolute 100% proof that there is a way back. Ian, thank you so much. Um, and we're going to pick this up again next week. And we're okay. going to talk about the way back. And we're going to talk about the people that supported you in that journey. Um, but I know that everybody looking at this will want to join me in saying thank you so, so much um, for sharing this with us. You're, you're incredible. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you ever so much.